Gemini, I'll now be exploring what's bringing the two of you together in this connection um, and then the areas of strength and areas of challenge. So let's have a look first and foremost at what's bringing the both of you together um, in this relationship, Gemini. Okay, you do have the wellness card. So that's a very strong intuitive bond straight away um, that's coming in around the both of you. Now, wellness points to well-being. And I feel like with this beautiful sword that's being held up, it almost resembles the Ace of Swords. Now, I feel like that's very powerful because you as an air sign um, are represented by the swords. So straight away, I feel like that's that's really highlighting a very powerful chapter between the both of you. But it's a chapter of goodness or it's an opportunity to bring more well-being into your life. Now, I feel like this person is going to bring in a lot of happiness and a lot of harmony, not only to your life, but from you to them as well. So it definitely works um, vice versa here. And I feel like what's bringing you together is your, your want, your desire, your yearning for, for that happiness, for that well-being in relationships. Um, with the connotation of the flowers of cre uh, the notion of the flowers of creation, um, the act of meditation, and that sword that's being held up here, almost like a divine, the Ace of Swords is, is given by the hand of God. So encompassing this connection, I feel like you're actually going to act, um, actively attract the relationship you're envisioning, Gemini. Um, so whether you're thinking about this, whether you're envisioning it, whether you're having thoughts about it, these thoughts are going to come true in this connection somehow. So straight away, the numbers four and six, six is a highly intuitive and spiritual number, Gemini. So I feel like you're definitely guided and, and brought together by your intuition um, together. But it's your, I think you're ready. I think you're ready to bring love. I think you're ready for this major relationship. It's your readiness, that yearning um, that's going to bring you and this person together. That's that's in fact what is bringing the both of you together. Um, so let's have a look and see the areas of strength. Okay, what's the strong points of this um, connection between the both of you? Okay, lots of pentacle cards here. Okay, the strength, the hermit. This is very powerful. It is Virgo energy and Virgo is ruled by Mercury, much like yourself, Gemini. So I feel in terms of an emotion, uh, sorry, a mental connection, this is straight away something that's going to be your strong point here. The hermit seeks an aesthetic life. The hermit seeks a certain life that is non-conformist and non-conventional. So I feel like one of your strengths in the relationship is finding things that resonate with you. It's almost like you're going to design this relationship with this person. And it might be open-minded, it might be very different, it might be unconventional, but I think it's going to work for you. So if that's one of your strong points here, not only is this is this perfectionism, I think the both of you are going to try really hard to perfect things because that's what the Virgo does. The Virgo wants to perfect everything he's working with, everything he believes in, everything that he says. So not only is, is this indicating a strong mental connection, I think the need for perfection or the need for, for thinking outside of the box uh, is going to be very significant in this relationship. Um, now, Virgo is an earth sign, so you have a lot of earth energy here. And earth is all about the physical gains, um, attraction, the physical realm, ownership, exclusivity, um, money, milestones, moving in together. All that physical stuff is going to be your strength. Now, the Nine of Pentacles is a relationship that requires you to be in the moment and take each day as it comes. Now, the Virgo doesn't think this way, so I think there's a reminder here for you to maybe calm the Virgo side, okay, calm the, the heavy, heavily analytical need to presume a future, need to envision it all um, side of you, and you need to live each day as it comes. And I think you will. I think this is a part, a, a reason why this person is coming into your life. I think they're going to inject this type of energy. And I think in one way, it's going to rub off on you, Gemini. And I think this is really going to help move your relationship forward. 
Um, but the Nine of Pentacles is admiration. It is beauty. So I feel like this, this speaks of very strong attraction, actually. Um, but also enjoyment. You know, um, whether it is lavish enjoyment, whether it's a hobby, I think there is commonality between the both of you um, that really is going to be accentuated in this relationship. But the Knight of Pentacles is in all things serious. This is the last night of the deck. Um, he presents to the King and Queen of Pentacles and he has something extremely worthy, you know, to offer. This is this is very chivalrous. So in terms of your strength of this connection, um, I feel like there's a lot of consistency between the both of you. Consistency to take things as it comes, consistency to admire and respect each other, perhaps consistency in perfecting your emotions, maybe perfecting um, your shortcomings, Gemini. And likewise, this person um, sort of working consistently and, and being um, constant with you. Um, I think that's that's a beautiful symbol here. Um, with that Knight of Pentacles. But let's have a look and see what's coming up in terms of challenges that you may face with this person. Okay, the Devil Energy, Ten of Swords, Ace of Cups. Okay, starting off with the devil, I mean, this is this is strong energy of temptation or manipulation or needing to control things, the need for control. And in a way, the Virgo can be quite controlling energy too. So I think with the devil coming up in areas of challenge, I think you may struggle. Um, you may struggle in, in areas of needing to control a situation or control this person, Gemini. Um, if it's not you, it could be them. If you take the symbolism out of it, it does represent the sign of Capricorn. And Capricorn is very resilient to changes, um, to things that throw them off. So I feel like it's you needing to be more resilient. I want to say tolerable, but obviously each situation is different. And if someone is doing something to you that's just completely disrespectful, abusive, you know, just evil, I would never recommend you stay in those sorts of situations. But you know, the devil card doesn't always carry such heavy connotations. It can be things like addiction and codependency and really clingy behavior here, feeling really bound to someone. So um, I feel like there might be complications in detaching from this person somehow. And the both of you could be very heavily reliant on each other, like constantly needing to communicate. You can't make, you know, any sorts of small decisions without this person. It's constantly needing um, their, their input, their opinion. And, and molding, you know, merging identities in a way, you know, we need to maintain our own identities and relationships. And that could be an area where you struggle when you come into this one. Now, the Ten of Swords here can point to things like betrayal and pain, especially with words. Now, I think communication definitely needs to be adhered to and something about sensitivity. So one of you may be more sensitive than the other. One of you may feel like you're not able to freely express yourself. I do feel like some hurdles in communication or some words that will be exchanged. I think the, the way in which you communicate, um, you know, you need to think about this, Gemini. It needs to be, but it could also be betrayal. So hurting each other, hurting each other and not being sensitive about it. You know, I, I think that could be an obstacle that may uh, be a part of this relationship. Now, the Ace of Cups in terms of an obstacle here is not seeking opportunity when it's being granted from you. Um, the Ace of Cups is not allowing yourself to fully feel what you need to feel. Now, for some of you, this might be things to do with like having your guard up, having walls up. Um, and if it's not with you, it's with this person. But um, the Ace of Cups does speak about emotion. Um, you know. So when I see this card, I do think of abundance and plenty and things of that nature but when it's come up in an area of challenge it's 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 taking something for granted or it's going too far with it so i think it's more to do with boundaries i think crossing boundaries or overstepping the mark could be something that you may find very very challenging with this person or it may come up and be emotionally uh, very challenging okay the bird is all about being a message so i definitely feel it's possibly overstepping the boundary promising more 
much more than you can actually commit to maybe or maybe this person promising more than they can actually commit to so it could be things like that but this is a general reading i do hope it's been helpful and hopefully we shall be in touch soon